I spent my entire life developing a particular theory of the universe, and now that theory is being questioned. I welcome this challenge because it's how we move forward. It's how progress in science is made. The James Webb Telescope is overturning much of what has been held as truth in cosmology for the past 100 years. A new ultra-deep image once again shows that we've made mistakes in astronomy. The telescope that was supposed to reveal the first stars of the universe is now becoming a killer of the previous worldview and may lead to an entirely new science. Join us on this cosmic journey as the new ultra-deep image from the James Webb Space Telescope reveals that we may have messed up big time. Not all researchers are shivering in fear at these new facts. Many scientists welcome these developments as it has long been clear that something was wrong with our old theories. The discrepancies in measuring the expansion rate of the universe alone should have alerted researchers years ago, but instead of interpreting the warnings correctly, they clung to old theories. The cosmic microwave background radiation, CMB, is considered the oldest light in the universe. The CMB was created around 380,000 years after the Big Bang, when the universe had cooled enough for electrons and protons to form stable hydrogen atoms. Researchers call this transition reionization, which made the universe permeable to light. The CMB was first discovered in 1964 by American physicists Arnold Penzias and Robert Wilson. While working on a new type of antenna technology, they encountered constant noise coming from every direction in the sky. This discovery was long regarded as one of the strongest pieces of evidence for the Big Bang Theory. Penzias and Wilson shared a Nobel Prize and went down in the history of astrophysics. The CMB likely offers a snapshot of the young universe. Tiny temperature fluctuations provide important information about the conditions of the universe shortly after the Big Bang. Scientists use the CMB as a reliable imprint of the basic metrics of the material cosmos to measure the expansion rate of the universe, among other things. Astronomer Edwin Hubble had already made this calculation in the late 1920s. Hubble discovered that distant galaxies move away from us in all directions and that their speed is proportional to their distance. Today, we know these observations as the Hubble law or the Hubble constant. Of course, Hubble did not have the advanced measuring techniques we have now. When the CMB was discovered, researchers recalculated the rate, and the new value was significantly lower than Hubble's original figure. Later, scientists recalculated the rate again using Type 1 supernovae as standard candles. Astronomers had such stable light available that it could be used as a reliable measuring point. Distance is calculated with standard candles by comparing the observed brightness with their actual luminosity. Measurements from the CMB yielded an expansion rate of about 67 kilometers per, per megaparsec, while measurements using supernovae yielded about 74 kilometers per, per megaparsec. Did you know that this difference in determining the expansion rate of the universe has been known since the 1990s? Since then, Researchers have suspected that something might be wrong with the assessment of the CMB, the measurement methods, or the idea of the expansion of the universe. The discrepancy between the various measured values of the expansion rate is known in science as the S8 tension, or Hubble tension. The implications of this tension are not just minor differences in measurement. These different results show that our understanding of the universe may be fundamentally flawed. For a long time, researchers were at a loss. Since the James Webb Space Telescope went into service, it has given scientists some surprises that may now shed light on the problem of the universe's expansion rate. Galaxies so old and mature that their formation theoretically predates the Big Bang are completely overturning old science in astrophysics. There is no longer talk of discrepancies or differences in measurement. Researchers are now discussing the biggest crisis in modern astronomy. Not only could the rate of expansion of the universe be wrong, but the whole idea of expansion, or the Big Bang, is also being put to the test. Webb's images provide evidence of a universe that is very different from what we have long believed. The S8 tension was the first warning, and researchers who still believe in the old theories now face a significant challenge. Do we really know nothing about the universe? Today, many scientists are standing on the ruins of their life's work, 
they look into space in horror, no longer understanding what they are seeing. In light of this crisis in science, we must ask ourselves, what do we really know about the universe? To answer this question, we need to understand how science works. Theoretical scientists use a complex web of mathematical models, empirical data, and deductive reasoning to draw conclusions from the general to the specific. Their knowledge comes from a combination of observed phenomena, experimental results, and many theoretical analyses. The word theory alone shows that these are constructs and ideas, not absolute truths. The only practical knowledge we have are the images provided by telescopes, the sounds, waves, and radiation captured by radio telescopes, and the latest data from neutrino measuring systems or gravitational wave detectors. With the James Webb Space Telescope, we now have an instrument that allows us, for the first time, to break down the oldest light into individual frequencies and analyze it in ways previously impossible. Webb can reveal which elements were predominant in galaxies over 13 billion years ago, the amount of mass they contained, and what this indicates about the number of stars. The telescope can even reconstruct the shape and movement of galaxies. However, Webb does have some limitations. For instance, in some images, the telescope cannot definitively determine whether we are observing galaxies or black holes that shine as brightly as galaxies due to their massive accretion disks. We must acknowledge that our science has evolved in ways that have accepted too many possibilities as truths while disregarding alternative explanations. For a long time, research has been confident in its correctness. The latest findings from the James Webb Telescope offer important clues that may lead to replacing old theories with new truths, as has happened many times in science. Scientists are currently in a state of anticipation. The new discoveries are so extraordinary that many researchers find it difficult to propose new explanations. These findings are shaking the foundations of our physics, and this is causing concern among researchers. Today's teachings of physics are still largely based on Isaac Newton's work from the 17th century. For centuries, his laws of motion and gravity formed the foundation of our physical understanding of the real world, including the universe. Newton's laws explain the motion of objects under everyday conditions and work quite well on Earth. However, in space, his ideas had to be expanded, and this was largely accomplished by Albert Einstein at the beginning of the 20th century. Einstein's special theory of relativity, published in 1905, revolutionized our understanding of space and time. He proved that space and time are relative to each other and depend on the observer's movement. The general theory of relativity followed in 1915, providing mathematical proofs of gravitational phenomena based on the curvature of space-time by masses such as stars or galaxies. While Einstein's laws and ideas are coherent in many areas, they too have limitations. Einstein himself knew during his lifetime that his theories would never be sufficient to describe the universe as a whole. He dreamed of finding a world formula, but he did not succeed. To this day, no other researcher has succeeded either. Where's the mistake? Wouldn't it be interesting to know where the error lies? Michio Kaku, the popular astrophysicist from the USA, stated in an interview that the person who solves this problem is almost certain to win a Nobel Prize. So, what facts might scientists have overlooked? Where could they have misinterpreted phenomena? Or is there a possibility that our telescopes are to blame? At the top of the list of suspects for the real causes of the cosmological crisis are dark matter and dark energy. Our current models of the universe suggest that dark matter and dark energy together make up about 95% of the universe. However, neither has ever been directly observed, and consequently, their real existence has never been proven. It's possible they don't exist at all, which would require us to explain the expansion of the universe and the dynamics of galaxies differently. Alternatively, both may have properties we have yet to discover— one idea currently under discussion is that the physical properties of these two dark components have changed over time, which could even imply that we are dealing with some form of intelligence. Next to be scrutinized is gravity. This force, which supposedly leads to attraction through mass or the curvature of space-time by mass, has not been definitively proven. The concepts of space-time curvature largely originate from Einstein and have been validated many times over. 
However, we cannot rule out the possibility that gravity has completely different properties than we have assumed, or that a different effect is responsible for the gravitational pull on and between objects. Over the decades, several values have been established in cosmology and astrophysics as so-called cosmic constants. These values are considered largely reliable because they hardly change. Calculations have shown that slight variations in these constants could introduce new dynamics into the universe, allowing us to explain various phenomena without invoking dark energy. It is also possible that our interpretations of the redshift of light are incorrect and that for decades we have been measuring the cosmos incorrectly, leading to erroneous estimates of the age of galaxies. Perhaps our assumptions about the initial conditions of the universe were also incorrect. We may have misinterpreted the cosmic microwave background radiation, and it's possible that the universe cannot be traced back to a single starting point. This would mean that the idea of the Big Bang is incorrect. Although we are technologically advanced, we cannot entirely rule out minor errors in the Webb telescope or other observational instruments. Engineers and scientists acknowledge that errors in instrumentation, data processing, or interpretation are always a possibility in the face of such a crisis. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries, signing off.